You know, California's latest climate assessment projects that heat waves will become more intense, will last longer, and will happen more frequently in the years ahead. From 1980 to 2000, there were an average of six annual extreme heat days in Los Angeles. But by 2050, that number is predicted to be 22 days. And this is just one of the many reasons why the LA Parks Foundation recently launched the Park Forest Initiative. It's aimed at installing microforests throughout Los Angeles to combat the urban heat island effect, close the climate gap, and grow our urban canopy. We are planting 12 trees. Four of them are oaks, four of them are agathis, and then four of them are sycamores. They're all 24 inch box trees. They range between three and five years. Today, we have a large exercise area inside of Harbor Regional Park. We'd like to bring shade to the people using the equipment. Also, there's walkways that go through. We like to shade the walkways. That's really important. We've installed eight forests in the first year, and our goal is to plant 10 forests a year for the next 10 years. We actually stole the idea from Paris. They launched a microforest initiative a few years ago, and I read about it, and it just instantly just vacuumed up all the information I could get on it. And we created and adapted our LA Park Forest Initiative to LA City Parks. Climate change was the, the key motivator for this initiative. The serious problem that we were trying to address was the urban heat island effect. Uh, Mayor Garcetti had created this heat map of Los Angeles, and it was horrifying. You know, the most urbanized areas were just so much hotter than um, other parts of the city. Uh, for example, in Hollenbeck, we planted 20 trees, and we're planting large trees. They're between 8 and 12 feet tall, so they, there is the instant shade impact and we're not going to install trees that aren't gonna thrive for the next 50 years. That's why we're maintaining them for the first two years until they're established, and we're planting trees that are you know, ready for warmer weather. The stressors on trees is, is getting greater, and so I would ideally like to be able to have a tree that can live here right now, and live in Phoenix or in Baja. So if it's got that ability to be adaptable in both those range, I'm a little more confident um, planting it. We work extremely closely with the Department of Recreation and Parks in Los Angeles. And they developed a list for us of the parks that needed trees the most. And uh, then we sit down with donors who are interested in this initiative and go through all of the parks where trees are needed the most. I look at pictures and I see like the little kids and I'm just like, wow, these trees are gonna grow with them, you know? And that's just amazing to know that we're able to provide that to our kids. Within the five years that I've been here, LA Parks Foundation has proven itself to continuously support the community in a quick manner. When they say, hey, we're gonna put this in, it's literally, you know, a couple months to get the paperwork done and get the approvals and it comes in, which is nice to see that we have that connection with the LA Parks Foundation. I like to say the act of planting a tree is to send future generations a love letter. And so it's my hope that when I plant this tree that it'll be around in 75 years. Donors love this initiative. The parks love the initiative. The park users love the initiative. Anybody who has reached out to us is thrilled with it. Uh, it draws people into the park to have a forest there because they can use areas of the park that they probably couldn't use before because it's cooler. It's been a beautiful, beautiful initiative for us. For updates on upcoming installations and to learn how you could help with the next one, visit laparksfoundation.org.